Welcome. Uh, thanks again for making the trek over from the uh, other hotel to here. Uh, so uh, the goal today is to basically uh, impress you with how easy it is to really set up um, a VS Code with DDEV um, to make you more efficient. And um, for me, it's really about making code quality tools even easier to use. So I don't know how many people use PHP CS or PHP STAN regularly, or even unit testing or xdebug. Sometimes they can be onerous to use and set up, or even just to remember to use locally. You know, sometimes you might have them as part of your, your, your um, deployment um, uh, chain, but um, I'd like to have them locally as well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So this is me, uh, I've been uh, in Drupal for, um, I've stopped incrementing the years, I've just added a plus and I'm, I'm done with it for now. Um, I am one of the founders of DrupalEasy.com. We are a small Drupal consulting and training firm. Um, we are kind of known for our, um, on the training side of things, uh, two long form training programs, a beginner one, that's 12 weeks, we meet two half days a week and then a professional module development one that's 15 weeks long. And I'll talk about that in a second. But I also want to talk about this guy, because a um, good buddy of mine, uh, he, uh, Mike Herschel, he's done a bunch of, he's been very active in Core lately. Um, with Al, he's one of the guys behind Olivero, single directory components. Um, he ran for president, yes, of the United States, so you definitely want to check that out. Um, uh, he's co-organizer of Florida Drupal Camp uh, with myself and a bunch of others, which is the best camp, no offense to the GovCamp organizers if there are any. Um, but honestly, it's kind of, I was happy when I got this room because if it was easier for you to get to his presentation, which is happening right now, I would actually encourage you to go because if it was just 20 feet away, but it's across the street and stuff, so you're kind of stuck here. It's kind of like a hostage situation now. Um, but since they're recording, um, you know, you probably want to, if you do any front end at all, that's actually the session to be at right now, not this one. So, a little bait and switch there. Um, and by the way, uh, um, we agreed he's talking about me right now in his session. So, right. hopefully sending people here. So, uh, what I'm going to present today is actually a small sliver of our long form training program. So, this is the advertising part of my session. It'll be very short. Um, uh, you know, we've been teaching this for about three years. Um, and we go deep into Drupal module development with uh, an emphasis on quality tools like we're going to talk about today, um, automated testing, which we'll actually talk about today as well, as well as like best practices. And really, if you're going to write a Drupal module, how can you write it in a way that kind of is the right way to do it, makes it future proof, makes it easy to update, makes it easy to test. So uh, we go deep into a lot of that stuff. So if you're interested in that, there's a URL there. I also have some one sheets about the beginner class in this course as well. Just ask me later on and I'll, I'll hand you one. So end of advertisement. So um, we're gonna talk about uh, VS Code and DDEV. Um, the assumption here is that you know about DDEV already and maybe you're comfortable using it. Um, and same goes for VS Code. Um, I'm going to talk about these uh, extensions. Um, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty about how to install the VS Code extension or find it. Um, hopefully you all know how to do that already. If not, that's actually the easy part of all this. Um, but this is a sub, this is like, the, the, let's call it the core set of extensions that I recommend to folks using VS Code. There's other ones and I have a slide later on, other ones that we're going to talk about. Um, and if we have time, I'll, I'll show them to you. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about, because this is kind of like, this is a pet peeve of mine, just making sure everyone is aware that on your local or your personal development environment, if you're developing a Drupal site, you should always have a settings.local.php. And we'll talk about that later as well. It really has nothing to do with DDEV or VS Code. It's just this is another place where I can cram that down people's throats to make sure people are using it. Because it, you know, you should be. All right, so like I said, you should know something about DDEV, something about VS Code. If you want to do what I'm doing, I mean, in a 45-minute session, you can't really, but if you want to play later on, um, you probably want a D10 site up and running using DDEV. You want definitely the core development dependencies installed as well. 
Um, this includes things like all the code quality tools we're going to talk about, PHPCS, PHP STAN, all the stuff to run uh, PHP unit tests. Um, you should have some comfort on the command line, but really my goal is to use the command line as little as possible, right? And so you will see by the, by the time I get to the demo, there's very little you'll actually need to do on the command line in your day-to-day -day, you know, work if you, if you set things up this way, and if that's the way you roll. I mean, if you like the command line, go nuts. Um, but if you like stuff in the UI and, and maybe a little more easily accessible, this is a good way to go. Um, you know, the tools that we're going to be using, you know, PHP CS specifically, um, you know, basically allows us to um, enforce or adhere to, is better, adhere to co uh, Drupal community coding standards. And uh, if you've never used Xdebug, um, you know, this might blow your mind, I don't know. Um, if you've used Xdebug and it's always a pain to set up and to get going, this will show you how to do it in a very easy way, using DDEV and VS Code. Um, some optional prerequisites. Actually, we're not even going to, um, I was going to talk about this, I, I should have removed this slide. Uh, you don't really have to worry about this stuff for what we're going to do today. All right, so here's the big disclaimer. This is one way to roll, right? There are, you know, your development environment is, can be a very personal thing. Um, so there's no like one or proper best practice way to configure this stuff. Um, what I'm going to show you is I'm super confident in saying this is a really good place to start. And that's not just coming from me, that's coming from literally the hundreds of folks that I've taught. And I know that this works and people are happy with this. And from here, you know, you can add on to this or you can make tweaks to my suggestions, but this is a good, you know, step one. Um, and then the other thing about it is development tools, they're moving targets. I don't move as fast as like front-end development tools, but things evolve all the time. So again, this is a good place to start, but you kind of want to pay attention to the landscape. And this isn't like a, you don't have to pay attention daily or even weekly, but every few months, just kind of check in, see what other people are doing, see if there's any new extensions out there you might want to add to your workflow to make things more efficient. So this isn't like a set it up today and you're good for the next seven years. Okay. Um, so yeah, just another list of uh, the extensions that we're going to be using. Um, and these are actually the names, including like even the capitalization of the extensions. If, if you go into, where did my VS Code go? Oh, there it is. Okay. How about I make that bigger? <laughs> right. If you go into you know, the sidebar thing, hit, click on extensions and come up here and search for PHP STAN, you know, it's literally, you know, lower, lowercase PHP STAN, you know, so these are the official names. Now, I will say there's another excellent VS Code extension called DDEV Manager, relatively new earlier this year type of thing. For the way I'm going to show you how I use things, you really don't need that. Um, because the way we're going to do this today is we're going to connect VS Code directly to the DDEV web container. So we are basically going to bypass, in my case, Mac OS completely. VS Code is going to be running in Mac OS, but it's not connecting to the Mac OS file system. It's connecting to the DDEV web container file system. So by the time we get into VS Code, we're kind of like inside of DDEV. So there's no reason for DDEV to... like. We, we can't, it doesn't make sense to have DDEV controls if you're already inside the machine. So if you are using VS Code in a more traditional way where you're connecting to a directory in like your sites folder, then the DDEV manager extension, it's very good. It's very good, but it's just, it's not, um, it doesn't make sense in the context that we're gonna, we're gonna use it. Okay, so how does this all work? Um, so first off, and did I quit? Yeah. I, I, before I present, I quit everything, and obviously I overquit things. Um, make this bigger. Ooh, big enough, hopefully. All right, so I basically have a Drupal 10 site. Um, 
on my machine at all times. It's kind of like a little playground site. I do some contrib work on the site and, and, and stuff. So it's basically a stock Drupal 10 site. It's got some contributed modules in there. Um, it has those Drupal core dev dependencies I told you about. Um, so the first thing you have to do, obviously, is you know, configure ddev for it. I'm not going to go through all that. It's relatively easy. And then you've got to get the project going. And this is all before you get into VS Code, and that'll be apparent in a second. So, and I'll, I'm going to do a DDEV restart that's already running, but, you know, so you get those containers running. And the reason you kind of have to do it outside of VS Code is because, remember, we're going to open up VS Code and, like, jack right into that DDEV web container. So we can't jack into a DDEV web container if DDEV's not running. So we need, like, an external interface to DDEV to get things running. So we just, there's really... Uh, the only command I'm going to run in ddev, other than later on I might do a ddev stop, right? So we get things going. All right, so we can actually just put that away. And I'm going to cancel this and close this for now. And actually, let's just quit VS Code completely, right? All right, so we got our project running. We fire up Visual Studio Code. And I hope it doesn't open up the old one. Rather, yeah. All right, so... Oh, look at that, a new update, fantastic. Um, we are, out of the box, connected to Mac OS X, right? So if I just go to my sites directory and go to the same D10 directory, like this file system right here, this is looking at the files in the Mac OS X file system. So this is a traditional way of using VS Code. We're kind of... You know, we're not inside the container, so this, by the way, this is that DDEV um, uh, Banjo extension. So this is the traditional way of doing it. The way that I found that it's better performant and it allows easier and more efficient access to all the tools that we're going to use is to use, and it was the first extension listed on the slides, the Remote Explorer extension right down here. So this is actually, you know, it's a Microsoft extension, so it's officially supported and stuff. But the short version of what this does, this is the thing that lets us connect directly to the DDEV web container. Right? So this is installed and enabled, and when it is, you get uh, this little icon right here. Let's see. Hover over it. That says Remote Explorer, for those of you in the back. Click on this, and it will basically show you running... Docker containers mm. that you can directly connect to, right? So in this case, you know, we want to connect to the, the D10 web container. Like, it'll let us connect to the database container. Here's some other projects that aren't currently running, but we want to connect to this D10 web container. So this is the, you know, this is like jacking into the matrix, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come here, and then basically, it's a little folder with a plus button, um, and say, you know, I want to open that file system in VS Code. So we do that. It opens up a new window. We can get rid of this old one. It takes just a second to establish a connection. It does this all through SSH. Usually not this long, but, you know, since I'm presenting, it's going to take its time. Come on. All right, well, while that's thinking about it, let me go back to the slides real quick over here. All right, so, you know, we saw the DDEV start. We launched from the Remote Explorer interface. We selected the DDEV DD web container, and this is all what I just said a second ago, so. All right, so it's important to note that when you install extensions in VS Code, there are some extensions that once you connect to a container, you also have to install them inside the container. You're not really installing them inside the container. I think you're just making them container aware, but it, it feels like, and if this is connected, oh, come on. You're really going to give me a hard time today? There was a thing about you were running out of disk space. I don't know if that's... No, that's, okay. that's a lie, first of all. It's a, it's a dirty <laughs> lie that Dita was telling, telling us. So... Uh, No, I'm already in it, so come on. 
interested in stalling something in the bottom right. Yeah, it shouldn't have to install the server. That's the problem. I literally, I just did all of this sitting in another se session as a practice, and of course. We just push an update to the image, maybe? Let's try it again. Let's try this. Okay, so that looks good. Now let me just reload this list. That reloaded very quickly. I wonder if that VS Code update is. Do you need to disable the data because it said the No, normally, literally, this is just what this just should work, but. So, what does the show log show? I wonder if this is. I wonder if it's updating. VS Code server. Oh, come on. Is there an update to that? Oh! Something's happened. Oh, look at that! Okay, it just took a while. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right over there. So now, we're in, and something's still happening. Now, for some reason, I'm, it ha I'm guessing it has to do with the update. But now, this is interesting. I should have pointed this out a second ago, and actually, I can, well, you know, we can use our imaginations, right? When I was um, looking at the Mac OS file system, the, the root of this was actually that D10 directory, and my Mac OS 10 D10 directory. Now that I'm inside the container, the root of this project is actually an HTML directory. And that kind of tracks, because if we look at, um, blah, blah, blah. so there's the D10 directory right there, right? And if I do a ddiv SSH to go inside the container, you know, I'm actually in an HTML directory. So, so that tracks. So this is, this is really like the, what we just did, this is the key to unlocking everything else we're going to do, is connecting directly to the container. Um, this is actually a really slick way of doing things. Um, I know um, if you're in, on an older machine, and look at that stuff, is still happening. Wow. If you're on an older machine um, where Docker runs really slow, and what I'm about to say is kind of outside the scope, so I'm just going to mention it and then hand wave a little bit. Um, you can actually do this for all of your projects, connect directly to the Docker container, and one of the things that makes Docker slow is the syncing of files between the Docker file system, or whatever, you know, usually the Linux file system inside your container, <coughs> with your host operating system. Right, because any time a file changes in your container, one of the things that Docker does, if you have the, 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 um, the file systems mapped, is it makes a corresponding change in your host operating system. So that syncing of all those files, that's one of the big reasons why Docker can be slow on older machines. So you can, if, you, if you connect directly to the, to the container, you can actually disable that syncing. And that speeds up you know, Docker immensely. And you're running all these containers in a cloud system as well. You just SSH right to the computer to the cloud. Right. Right. Yeah. So when you make a change here, though, does it sync? Yeah. Back? Oh yeah. Because I, I don't do what I just said. Right. Because I don't need to. I have a, I have a pretty beefy machine, right. so it, it runs fast. So yeah. All right. So I, I'm on the terminal. It's still looking like it's doing something, but let me see. Can I? Yeah. I don't know what's going on there, but we'll we'll let that go. No, but it shouldn't give me access. I mean, I guess I can open up another terminal window. We'll worry about that in a minute. So let me go back to some of these extensions. I, I believe these are all installed in the container already. Um, but you can see, I do have the option of, you know, a like DW manager. It's installed and enabled in VS Code. But if I wanted to use it inside this container, which again, makes no sense at all, I would just have to click this button. Um, and fig is a command line tool that I use. If I wanted to you know, use the fig extension inside this terminal, I would have to click that. So sometimes for some of these other ones that I mentioned in the slides, you have to install them in the container. And then every now and then, like this um, doc block one, you basically just have to reload the window for that extension to, uh, 
to be active. So just be aware when you open up a new project, um, go to extensions and just make sure the extensions you expect to be enabled are actually really enabled. All right, so let's talk about Visual Studio Code settings files. Um, there's actually two, two levels of, of uh, I say styles, or settings, settings files, I don't know what I actually said. Um, I always get yelled at by the recording people when I wander. So, um, so there's user settings, which are kind of like your, glo your global configuration. And then there's workspace settings, which are kind of your per project settings. Um, I like to have kind of like all my defaults in my user settings, and then a few selective overrides in my per project settings. So um, I'm actually going to give you, we'll see on the next two slides, links to both of my recommended starting points for both of those, so you have access to that. So if you've never set up VS Code for any of this stuff, you might just want to copy and paste all of it. If you've already done some configuration, you might want to like selectively merge some stuff in. Um, but if you've never like played with these files, you know a lot of what um, is in these two JSON files you can get to from code settings. Right, right there, just a, reg just a regular old, you know, settings. And that just opens up the nice GUI. Um, but for some of these extensions, their settings, or not all of their settings, are exposed through that. So honestly, I normally just do, if you've ever, you know, if you ever use a command palette on my machine or Max, it's command shift P. It opens up this little thing. And then your most used commands that you access are in this top section above the line. Um, but there's you know, preferences, open user settings, that's the global, and then workspace settings, that's the per project, and they're both JSON files. So those are the two files we're going to be looking at here um, briefly, not, not terribly long. Uh, workspace settings right there. Okay, so lucky for all of us, I'm not going to go through this stuff line by line because that would, you know, put all of us to sleep, probably including me. Um, so if you want to see all of these settings, you know, these links go to literally gists on GitHub. So this is the user settings, and we'll make this one a lot bigger. That is the workplace settings. So here's how I kind of roll with this stuff. Um, I set up my user settings assuming that I'm not going to uh, directly connect to the container for whatever reason. You know, maybe I have a project that, uh, you know, I don't know. For some reason, I'm just not, you know, connected. I'm looking at it the kind of the old school way where VS Code is looking at Mac OS X. I have some of these tools configured so that they still work or mostly work in that situation, right? So these are all good defaults. And by the way, a lot of this stuff um, there's a wiki page on Drupal.org about configuring VS Code. Um, I would say 60% of what you see here is from that page. So I use that as my starting point, and then I kind of add on to it. Um, so there's like basic editor things that help, uh, help us automatically adhere to Drupal coding standards. You know, file association stuff, so the color coding in VS Code works. Um, this bit where you know we exclude some things from indexing and watching basically just it makes the indexing it, it allows vs code to index your code base faster and more efficiently because it doesn't have to crawl through all of your you know git or god forbid cvs files you know not cvs old school anybody yeah all right um which there could be thousands of these files and honestly you don't care about them Right? They don't need to be indexed by VS Code for code completion and stuff. So let's just ignore all of those, make things run faster. Um, you know, some other file format stuff. And then, um, and I recommend you do this, I have like per extension settings. So this is my PHP sniffer unifier, PHP linton, doc blocker. Um, that way, when I go in, and honestly, when I teach or if I want to tweak something, it's easy for me to find this stuff. Um, and you can see, I even leave myself little notes, like, um, you know, this is kind of my default executable path for PHP CS, and I actually install this other tool called Drupal Coder that provides that. So this is, this works when I'm not directly connected to a DDEV web container, 
when I am directly connected to the DW web container, then this gets overridden by my workplace setting. So it's just a path to the same tool but inside the container. So you'll see, you know, some of these things. I have, you know, see workspace settings. So just to kind of um, leave myself a little, leave future Mike uh, help. So dock blocker and telefence, smart snippets, and then some other ones at the bottom. So again, this is a pretty solid place to start. And then the overrides. So if we just look at one. So we'll look at the PHP. This is a, for PHP CS, which is like kind of the Drupal coding standards check, which we'll see in a second in action. You know, this path is in Mac OS 10. Users, Michael sites, there's my Drupal coder, and then inside that vendor bin CSS. So this, I can type this into my terminal app in Mac OS 10, and this will work. But if VS Code is tied directly to the DDEV web container, this path makes no sense. Because data, I mean, VS Code can't see this file system. So when I'm connected directly to the web container, that path is var www.html vendor bin php cs because this is the file system of the DDEV web container. So this overrides the other one. So, and there's not a ton that we have to do that with. Um, no, let's do php cs and uh, php stat down here. So is the PHP CS what underlines the red? Well, that's VS Code, but the way we're going to configure it, those little red squigglies, yeah. they can be triggered by PHP CS error or PHP stan error or PHP linting error. So that this is that's one of the advantages you get with this. Yeah. All right, and we'll see it in action. That's part of that's part of my demo. All right, so there's a couple of Bitly links there. Um, so you can grab those if you want. If you don't grab them right now, don't worry about it. I will leave the last slide up for a while, and the last slide is the link to these slides. So it's a meta, right? All right, so let's talk about um, coding standards, which are awesome, right? Um, and PHP standard for that matter, which is a static analysis tool for PHP. Um, I wish I had more time to talk about PHP stand because I love it, and I think it makes, I, it has 100% made me a better PHP developer, and I can almost guarantee that if you use it regularly, you will be a better PHP developer. Um, uh, and I'll say one more thing about it because I, 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 I think it's such a great tool. Um, one of the things that makes it great is you control how aggressively it nudges you. So it's got 10 levels, 0 to 9. So you can say, PHP Stan, give me everything you find up to level 2. Right? And those are relatively easy fixes. And then it kind of trains, it's, it's like biofeedback, right? It kind of trains you to automatically, as you're writing code, to write code in a way that passes level two. Then after a while, you're gonna be, you know, you'll be writing code all the time and you won't see any PHP stand errors because you'll have achieved level two. And then maybe at that point, it's time to say, okay, I'm ready for level three. And then you're gonna start fixing level three errors and level four and level five. And by the way, Drupal core uh, barely passes level one at this point, <laughs> right? And level two is going to be a Herculean task because there's, and it doesn't mean Drupal core is bad. It just means, you know, the community has coalesced around standards that don't necessarily match PHP best practices. Um, doesn't mean the code's bad. Um, it just means the code could be better. It's like going from an A minus to an A to an A plus type of situation. Um, so normally, um, if you don't set any of this stuff up, in order to get, you know, PHP CS and PHP stand reports, you'd have to go to the command line. So I'm just going to show you one example of that. Close all that. So this is a, um, I know you can't see it right now, but this is a file from a um, contrib module, module called auto line and URL. It hasn't had a whole lot of love lately, and uh, me and some of my students are, um, um, uh, opening some merge requests for it, so I'm a little bit familiar with this. So it's just one of the one of the forms. So remember, I open up terminal, I am inside that web container, right? So I have access to Drosh Composer, everything in here. Um, there's no way for me to navigate into Mac OS 10 file system here, right? The world is is that DDEV web container. So I can do a which PHP CS, and it's that's where it lives. 
right? In kind of the predictive place, because this is my project root. I use Composer to install everything. PHPCS is a dependency. That's a binary, so obviously it goes in vendor bin PHPCS. Um, so I can just do PHPCS, and then I can do web, contrib, no, modules, contrib, auto login, src, form, config, config form. And this will give me my PHPCS report. And it's not terrible. There's two little PHPCS issues. Um, you know, in this file online, you can see 12 and 33. Um, and by the way, we already have a merge request open to fix all their dependency injection stuff. Um, but, you know, that's a little bit, you know, onerous to have to type for every file every time. Obviously, you know, we don't have to type it. If we want to do, like, the whole module, this is going to return just a bucket load of errors. But, you know, um, you know, you can run it for the whole module. And obviously, it's, it's pretty fast, and there's some errors there. So what is that? Does the error say that it, I mean, that shouldn't that mean that does, it's not going to work? No, no, this is more coding standards. Just standards. Coding standards. Yeah. PHP stands. PHP stem stuff can okay. mean something's not going to work. Or, you know, uh, PHP stem can find stuff like, um, under, you know, undeclared variables or dead branches and if statements, stuff like that. So this is good, and you can do this anyway. You can do this not, you know, just using terminal and, and vim. You know, this is nothing. What we want to do is we want to make this easy and more accessible. And the configuration that I showed you briefly, we'll say, combined with this PHP sniffer and beautifier extension that was on my slides list. If you have that extension and you configure things using the configuration I gave you, all of that stuff's on the problems tab. So there is the dependency injection. Oh, it's still. There is you know, one of those PHPCS. So basically, VS Code is running that PHP sniffer and beautifier extension, which is making the PHP CS calls for us, and then receiving the data back and putting it here in the problems tab. And repeat everything I just said, but swap out PHP CS for PHP stand. Right? There's a PHP stand extension that's running PHP stand, and then populating all of the issues in here. And not only does it populate the issues in there, go into your, uh, I forgot, I don't know your name, but what's your first name? Etienne. Etienne? Etienne. To go into Etienne's point, and let me just find one, it gives you these annoying red squigglies. Yeah. Right? And it will tell you this is the PHP stand error. So again, I'm big into biofeedback. This is like as you're typing, it's in your face, and this annoys the heck. Yeah, I always assume there's something wrong. That's what, when I see the wrong. Well, it depends on your definition of wrong, right? right? Like wrong as funny. in your client's going to pick up the phone and start yelling at you versus wrong as the, you know, the PHP god is frowning upon you. you know, <laughs> what's one of those? Um, but I definitely have the mindset, like on my phone, if I see a red bubble, like I have a notification, I'm like, oh, I got to see what the hell that is immediately. I can't let that stand. It's the same one with these red squiggles with me. So by... Using these extensions that populate your problems, um, it also will, as you type, give you these warnings. Yes, sir. So the PHP CS that's, I mean, through the extension, like, does it respect all the local uh, PHP CS dot XML configurations, or is it like the global? So I, I didn't. You, oh, you're I talking a little we, fast. But yeah, say, say it again. We, we can configure PHP CS uh, rules, right? Like which files to scan. Yeah, yeah. So. That, so the Drupal, I think I'm going to answer your question. Let me know if I don't. The, those Drupal core dev dependencies that I mentioned earlier, so I'll just show them to you inside the composer.json file. These, the, this thing right here, this is, you know, part of, well, it's part of Drupal core, technically. This includes PHP CS, PHP STAN, and a... Um, codified version of the Drupal coding standards and codified standards of the PHP STAN Drupal rules. So when you install this, this combined with, and I didn't talk about because of time, you know, um, 
there is a uh, you know a PHP CS configuration file, a PHP stand configuration file, and there's also we'll talk about in a few minutes a PHP unit configuration file. The this dependency plus the extensions plus this configuration file these are relatively easy to create, and there's plenty of resources online how to do that. That's what gives you. That's what helps you ensure that you're following Drupal coding standards. No, I mean, my, my question is... Oh, shoot, I didn't answer it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, no, it's all right. No, but, but, but when I do, like, when I run PHP CS um, through terminal, right? Right. I know that it respects PHP CS.xml that's on my local. Yes. But yeah. does, using this extension, does it respect that? Too? Yes. Um, okay, now I understand the question. Yes, and I'll, I'll tell you why, or I'll show you why. That's why. Because I'm pointing to it in my configuration. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing to the PHP CS XML file. Oh. And this is workspace settings? This is the workspace settings, yes. Because, you know, it has to be workspace because it's a, yeah. a container uh, path. But, you know, if we go back to the user settings, I do have a fallback to my Mac OS path. Yeah. Do you start to get conflict, like, redundant things in a in, uh, problems tab between, like, PHP CS, PHP stand? No. They kind of do two different things. They, I mean, they're, yeah, I guess there could be, but they're really just obvious things if they are. Otherwise, they kind of do two different things. And because yeah. I, I don't have PHP stand, and I'm, some of those things you're getting from it, I know I see warnings like that. I think they're from IntelliFence, maybe, but I yeah, I could depending on which tools you're using. Yeah, so it's, okay, I guess yeah. I'll try and see. Yeah. yeah, it's I like I said, I I strongly recommend it. All right. Um, how many people use this extension, Drupal Smart Snippets? I think so. Oh my gosh, okay. How many people ever do anything with Form API? Okay, so you're all about to install this. <laughs> how many people hate when they have to create like a new, you know, autocomplete widget and have to look up on Drupal.org, what are the attributes and like how do I do that? That sucks, right? All right, well. This is going to be a win for us. Like we can leave after this, based on all, based on the number of hands. Here's one thing: Drupal Smart Snippets does. Does what kind of form element do you want? We said the autocomplete entity. Let's see. Oh, actually, is it in? Yeah, uh, I actually opened up a bug report because it wasn't in here originally. Let me see if we got it in here. I picked the wrong one to suggest. Oh, I mean, yeah, probably. Well, okay. Let's say it's an image button you want. You know, so it basically gives you your starting point. So it does that. If you are in, I'm not in a hook context here, but if you're in a non-object context, you can also do at service. You can pick a service to inject. Well, but it uses, you know, the Drupal service. So you should not do this in a class. You should use dependency injection. But, I mean, this is huge. This, this is a huge time saver. Um, render arrays. How many people love working with render arrays? There you go. There's autocomplete on render arrays. Those three things right there, that's worth the price of admission to this session right there, if you haven't seen it before. And the other thing How this does... does it take? What's that? Does, what's the config for this? None. Nothing. Well, there's one line only to... So, there's one line of config. Um, well, I'm not even show it to you. It's in there. What it basically does is when you... It basically forces the um, the autocomplete options from this extension to the top of the list. Otherwise, you'd have to scroll way down to find these options. So, but the other thing it does, which is, you, by the way, that's a VS Code exclusive. There's nothing in PHP Storm that can do that yet. We'll say um, this one is a good one. Actually, I always get I use both PHP Storm and VS Code. But yeah, so if you all the hook auto completion. You can do this in VS Code as well. Wow, nice. You know, then you enter and then it, it you know, it specs it all out for you. So that's another huge time saver as well, I think. So Drupal Smart Snippets is awesome. It's lovingly maintained by um, an active member of the Drupal community. Um, and it's funny because, or I found it funny at least, yesterday was end of life for Drupal 9. So Andy, who is the maintainer of Drupal Smart Snippets, literally released a new version removing all Drupal 9 support from Drupal Smart Snippets. And I, I, I immediately DM'd him, I'm like, what are you doing? 
He's like, people need to upgrade Drupal 10. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's like my, it's my way of nudging people along. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, but, I mean, it'll still mostly work, but you're not going to get like deprecated. It's not going to show you deprecated stuff anymore. So this one's awesome. Use that. Um, PHP IntelliFence. Um, this is, this gives you, you know, there's a reason why PHP Storm is called PHP Storm because it does a lot of PHPE things. That's PHP dash Y when I say PHP. Um, IntelliFence gets us 90% there. Um, this is actually a freemium extension. Um, I'm using the free version, so you're seeing the free version. There's a paid version which gives even more, but honestly, I'm gonna show you, I mean, I use, you know, 95% of the usage is, I wanna see more about this method, this config method right here, and you right click, go to definition, Boom, here's the config method. So I don't have to figure out where does the config method come from. I can just right click and it says, oh, that's part of you know, Drupal core, config form base train. That's how the config method works. You know, you can read, I, I normally do it just to you know, see what, it, see what it, it is expecting and stuff like that. There's a bunch of other stuff IntelliFence does. Um, but this gets VS Code pretty close to PHP Storm's PHP. Uh, code navigation uh, functionality. Um, yeah, it, it does some code completion stuff. It will help you um, if you start writing, if you start a function call to a function it is aware of or it has indexed, it will kind of help you along with the arguments as you go. So it's, it's you know, it's an efficiency improvement for sure. Where are we on time? Oh my gosh, it's lunchtime. We gotta go. All right, PHP debug. Um, when you're inside the container, not everyone knows this that I talked to. If you've used xdebug with ddev, you can do ddev xdebug on, ddev xdebug off. If you're inside the container already, like we are, you can't do that. It, you know, ddev commands don't work in here. But luckily, you know, they snuck in a little, a couple of little commands that you can use inside the container. Um, there is a launch.json file that you have to configure, so this is where PHP Storm has a little bit of an advantage because it's easier to set up debugging. Um, but really, I'll just show it to you quick because um, I know we're short on time. There is a PHP debug extension you need, and then um, you can enable xdebug, enable xdebug inside the container, it's enabled, and then you go to the little debug interface, that little bug, should be pretty easy to find. And then the first time in any project, you've got to set up what's called a launch.json file. And it's short. This is it. This is the whole thing right there. Right? It really does. It's basically, um, it's, it's basically saying, you know, hey, debugger, listen for debugging information on this port, and here is your file mapping between what VS Code sees and where the code actually is. In this case, it's actually the exact same on both sides because we're talking the container. But you have that set up, you got the extension. Is that set up as your user default? Because I always have to like... No, this is inside of this, that VS Code directory is inside of my project. Just one thing that always annoys me is in a new project, I have to remember my path mappings and copy them from something. Do you have that like by default all the time? Yeah, this is every project. If you are to connect directly to a DDEV container, it's going to be the same for every project. Okay. Yep, because DDEV, you know, DDEV shoots out um, xdebug info always at this port. And all of your DDEV web containers are going to have this. Yeah. But this config is like your default no, JSON? This, or it figured it out on its own? Oh, no, no, no. You had to write it. You have to write it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've already written it. It's right here. Got it. All right. How does Twig debugging work yet? Yeah, I used to play around. I don't with it. do a ton of front end, so I don't. Okay. I haven't played with that. I, I can't answer, to be honest with you. All right, so let's just see an action real quick. Um, don't save. Go to config form. We'll do this. I enabled it, so I set a breakpoint, and I come over to the site, and I go to configuration, people, auto login URL. And of course it doesn't work because what did I, oh, I have to actually listen. So I, this I really like about VS Code. When you 
are actually listening for that connection, you get a big red bar down here. In PHP Storm, it's a wee bit more subtle. So now that we're listening, if I reload this form, boom, I'm now debugging. Right, I'm paused execution here. I can see all the variables in scope and I can, you know, walk through the code. I know that kind of made it look easy, but honestly, it's not that much more difficult than what you just saw. And I wouldn't even, I actually should not even use the word difficult because that's not even a fair word in this case. Um, always, 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 when you are done debugging, disable the debugger because it is a bit of a resource hog. X debug. Okay, we're almost done. We are almost done, I promise, and then we're going to get out of here. Um, Unit Test Explorer. How many people write tests regularly? Okay. One? No. <laughs> I don't believe that. See? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've drinking the Kool-Aid. Drink the Kool-Aid? Drinking? Drunk the Kool-Aid? Whatever the right verb is there. It's, it's in me. Um, so there is a great, and granted there is, you've got to set up a a PHP unit.xml file that's outside the scope of this, but it's documented on drupal.org. And by the way, if anybody needs help with this after the session, just find me, ping me. I'm on, I'm Ultimike pretty much everywhere, so I'm happy to share my, you know, my settings here. Um, or you can take my course because all of this stuff, I go much slower. We cover this over days, not 45 minutes. But you create this file. Um, I don't think there's really any other configuration and then you, people are calling me, okay. Um, and then you go to the little beaker, which is the testing, and it's, it's indexing or something, because it'll, we'll give it a second. Well, there we go. So this is basically all tests that it found. So let's say we want to run the test, and by the way, this is going to be a failing test, because this is auto login. I want to find all the tests, you know, for this. Um, and then I want to run that test. Boom. So, you know, you get feedback down here. You don't have to worry about doing it from the command line. Um, I often, you know, so one of the modules I maintain is uh, easy. So, you know, we've got, you know, five tests here. So if I'm working on one test, you know, I can run them all, or I can, like, work on the test and hit the play button and, you know, not go back and forth between the command line, and the output down here is, you know, is reasonable. I'll just run that one real quick. Well, it's usually like a color coding. It must be like a weird screen resolution thing. But I like this one a lot. Um, I think we're just about. Are we just about done? Use settings.local.php for God's sakes. Okay. Um, for number one reason, it will put all errors on your screen. Right. It will make sure that if there's a PHP warning or a PHP notice, you will see it on your screen when you're navigating the site on your local. By default, Drupal hides all this stuff because it can be a security vector or an attack vector. Um, and it turns off selected caches. And it's quite simple to, you know, Drupal gives you one. You know, you get an example settings on local.php. Just copy it, rename it, and make sure it's included in your settings.php. And, you know, obviously, don't put it in Git. Um, yeah, so other extensions that I regularly use, the Twig Language 2. Um, I'm, I'm a list guy, so there's a really good to-do highlights extension. So if you leave little to-dos for yourself in code, uh, this extension will basically um, create another, another thing down here with all of your to-dos. So that's kind of handy. I like that one. Um, there is, I mentioned this earlier, but there's a Drupal.org wiki page. I'm documenting it. I mean, I'm configuring VS Code. Um, you know, they talk about this empty indent extension. You actually don't need this one anymore. I tried to remove it from that page, but it got re-added back, so I, whatever. Um, you know, if you set up your uh, settings, you know, using my configuration, if not necessary. There's a composer extension. Um, I probably will look into this at some point. Um, anybody else have any others that they use regularly? No? Everyone just, everyone just wants to get to lunch, so I get it. Uh, that's the course. Ask me questions. It's awesome. But I'm biased because, you know. Yeah, and then final. If you want to copy these slides, that's the one you want. All right. Any other questions? Did I talk fast enough? One thing I like about doing it this way. Yeah. 
I don't have to type like Lando or D there. Right. Every time. Yep. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. That, that I'm with you. Lando's I'm with you. For me, the the reason why I really got into this, and by the way, you can do a very similar thing in PHP Storm. Right, and I actually teach that in the full version of the class. I teach so, so I teach DDEV Lando this and and PHP Storm. So when we update like Lando configuration, I mean or DDEV configurations, and when we have to restart it, like you have to restart the VS Code and everything. No, you shouldn't have to restart. Well, it will. Yep. If you do a DDEV restart, it will. It will disconnect. Right. And here I can show you real quick. I'm, so if I do a DDEV restart, so it's a DDEV stop and then a DDEV start, obviously. Can I ask um, your slides are saying that you need access? Oh, that's entirely possible. I forgot to make them public. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. I'll do it. So yeah, so it disconnected. So basically what I normally do, I just wait till it's, it starts up again, then I just reconnect. That's it. Easy peasy. Well, all right, let me look at the slides there. Da, 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 da. See, you're not me or my wife, so that's probably the reason why. Uh, anyone with the link, and I'll give you comment access so you can heckle, you. heckle me if you think there's a problem. Uh, there you go. It should work now. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, anybody else? Uh, what is... If you don't have issues with sync slowness, is yeah. there a good reason to use the remote connection anyway? That yeah, thing? because doing the PHP stand uh -huh. stuff especially is tricky to get into the problems tab. Okay. Um, and that's more due to the extension than anything else. The extension doesn't support it. Because not having the DDEV commands accessible It's not awful. I mean, honestly, what I do is, you know, I've got to have my terminal open anyway to yeah. do a DDEV start. So you just use them from the other. From yeah. The normal and, you sense. know, I use Git from uh, the host operating system because I find it a little bit faster. So yeah. I do have to bounce back and forth, forth a little bit. But when I'm nose down trying to, like, figure stuff out, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave this. Yeah. So you can have two windows of VS Code open. One is the Mac OS file system, the other one is remote. Yeah, but why would you do that? Maybe to run the DDEV commands in the terminal in VS Code. And the, oh, this I, would be a lot fewer, there'd be a lot less resources. The GUI integration. Yeah, no, the, I mean, the Git UI integration works. Yeah. No, that still works if you're connected directly to the container. Because Git is. We sit link. We have an installation profile yeah. set up a certain way. Well, see, you just, you know, I don't have to listen to anything you said because you just mentioned a weird scenario, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> no, so you said That's why I would do two windows. I answered your question. So some code... Why would I do that? So some code you have to edit directly in your host operating system and some code you don't? Is that what the I just did the remote explorer and it didn't show the, um, the repo correctly. No. But it's a local, it's like a local sim link to be able to develop in an installation profile. Oh, so that sim link is pointing to files outside of the project. Mm. It has to be because that that would that would describe what you're what you're it's talking about. The, it's in the project still. It's well, the sim link is. Yeah. But the where that sim link is pointing is outside of the project. No, it's also in the project. No, yeah, I mean that should work. Because one of the things we do in class is I, you know, when we write custom modules, no. we put them in a, in a modules directory. And then it sim links, using Composer, Composer will sim link that into the yeah, site. Composer and, sim links. Yeah. For me, that works. Okay. I'll keep trying. Yeah. Ping me, you know, and I'm happy to help you troubleshoot. Thank you. All right. Sorry to keep everyone. Go get lunch. Thank you.